chain rule the chain rule which we otherwise refer to as a function of a function is a rule of differentiation that helps us to differentiate composite functions for example if we have y equal to sine 4x and we're asked to differentiate this function now the first question is do we see this as a composite function how let us see if you look at this function closely the right hand side sine 4x you observe that there are two functions here actually the first function there is sine x and the second function is the one inside which is what 4x so 4x is sitting inside of sine inside of the sine function so we now have sine and where you have x for sine you now have what 4x inside of it so you have two functions sitting here and this is what we refer to as what the composition of what two functions so the chain rule is really applied when you have a situation where there's a function that is lying or sitting inside of another function and the procedure for differentiating such functions is what we refer to as the Leibniz rule which i'm going to apply here so let us take this as our first example y is equal to what sine 4x so we are asked to differentiate which means we want to find dy what over the x so the rule says that to differentiate this function the first thing you try to do is to call out the inner function the function is sitting inside in this case to me the function sitting inside is 4x so i will say let u be equal to what 4x once you have said that you differentiate so we differentiate u with respect to x and that will be what 4. so if we have done that what does this become this implies that this function y now becomes sine what you have said let u be 4x so what is now here this becomes sine u again we differentiate y with respect to what u not x because here we have here y and u so we now perform dy over du and that gives us what the cosine of u because once again then when you differentiate a sine function what do you get you get a cos function so having done this what are we looking for we want to find dy dx but what we have is du dx and dy du let's see what happens if i write du over dx and multiply by dy over du what do i get you see that du will cancel du and what is left is what dy dx which is what i'm looking for so du dx times dy du is nothing but what is nothing but dy over dx so du dx is 4 times dy du dy du dy du is cos u times cos u so that gives us 4 cos u but in the original problem there was no u we said let u be what 4x so we have to replace u with 4x and that becomes what 4 cos what 4x and what we have there becomes the derivative of y equal to what sine into 4x and this is what we call the Leibniz rule in other words the chain rule of differentiation of course this composition of functions could be for more than two functions we have y equal exponential negative 4x here do we also see a function of a function here let us see what we know is exponential x and not exponential minus 4x so minus 4x is a function that is being carried inside the exponential function so i would say let u be the function minus what 4x so that if you differentiate the u over the x you get minus 4. having done this the function now becomes what y equal to exponential what u because you have called minus 4x u so we now differentiate y with respect to u so dy over du is equal to what recall 
that if y is equal to exponential x, then dy dx is simply exponential what x. So here, instead of x, we have u. So dy du is nothing but what? Exponential u. Once again, we have du over dx times dy over du. And if you multiply again, you see that the u will cancel the u here. And what is left is what? dy over dx. So this gives us du dx, du dx is negative 4 times dy du, dy du is exponential u. So we have here minus 4 exponential u. What is our u? Our u is what? Negative 4x exponential minus what? 4x. And that becomes the derivative of the function y equal to exponential negative what? 4x. The idea here is simply, you just check the inner function, call it u, differentiate, and then go back to the parent function, differentiate, and multiply the two derivatives. Where you have more than two functions, let's say three functions, you multiply the three derivatives as the case may be. Our next example is y equal to cos into 3x squared plus 1. So here again, we see a function that carries another function in it. So the inner function here is 3x squared plus 1. So we say, let u be the inner function 3x squared plus 1. We differentiate u with respect to what? With respect to x, du dx. And that gives us what? 6x. So this function it now becomes y equal to what? The cosine of 3x squared plus 1 has now been called u. So that becomes cos u. Again, we differentiate, but this time to be dy over what? du. dy du. And what would that be? When you differentiate cos u, you get negative sine what? Sine u. So again, when you multiply du by dx and dy by du, what do we get? du will knock off du, and what we have is what? Is dy over dx which is what we want. We require dy dx. So this gives us du dx. du dx is 6x times dy du. dy du is negative sine u. If we write this well, we have negative 6x sine u. But what is our u? Our u is 3x squared plus 1. So write it as negative 6x sign our u is what 3x squared plus 1. here we have y is equal to the square root of in bracket x squared plus 3x plus 7 close bracket raised power 3. here i can see a function of a function of a function however by indices we can write this as x squared plus 3x plus 7 raised power 3 or raised power what? 1 over 2. By indices, this square root simply means raised to power what? 1 over 2. Again, by indices, we have two powers. So we can multiply them out. And we have x squared plus 3x plus 7. If we multiply the powers 3 and 1 over 2, what do we get? We get 3 over 2. So we have that y is equal to this function. We have only simplified the original function and we are not dealing with this. So here, once again, we see a function that carries another function inside of it. So I call the inner function again, let u be the inner function x squared plus 3x plus what? Plus 7. We differentiate du over dx gives us what? Differentiate x squared, you get what? 2x. Differentiate 3x, you get what? You get 3. And 7 is a constant. Differentiate 7, you get 0. So, our function now becomes, so this implies that our function becomes y equal to, we have called the whole of this u. That becomes u raised power what? 3 over 2. So, we differentiate y with respect to what? To u. So, dy over du is equal to what? Differentiate this, you get 
3 over 2 u now 3 over 2 minus 1 becomes what minus 1 over 2 you can pause the video at this point to verify that this derivative is nothing but this so once again we have the u dx we have the u over the x which are going to multiply by what the y over the u and like we did before if you multiply out these two derivatives you see that the u will knock off the u and what you have left is nothing but what the y over the x so that gives us u dx u dx is 2x plus 3 times the y du the y du is 3 over 2 u raised power minus what half we can use our indices again to tidy this to tidy things up and we get this becomes 3 into 2x plus 3 over 2 u raised power half and of course by indices raised to the power minus 1 over 2 simply means 1 over u raised to the power what? half. We can tidy things up a little bit further and we have 3 into 2x plus 3 divided by 2, the square root of what? u. Remember again that raised to the power half simply means the square root of u. And what was our u? Our u is nothing but what? x squared plus 3x plus 7. So the final answer becomes 3 into 2x plus 3 divided by 2 the square root of what u is what x squared plus 3x plus 7 of course we may go ahead to expand the numerator and we get 6x plus 9 divided by 2 then the square root of what x squared plus 3x plus 7 so we have just demonstrated um, the application of what of the chain rule please do not fail to like and subscribe to this youtube channel